Okay, now I'm going to talk about home theater systems because I've had, I have, um, I'm not talking about receivers and stuff like that with, um, speakers like center speakers and rear speakers and so forth. Well, I am talking about that, but I'm talking about systems that have everything built into the unit itself. I have three DVD disc changes right now. One of them has uh, is a five. Well, they're all five DVD disc changes, but only one of them has a built-in power amplifier with speaker connections in the back, and you can make it just a receiver technically. Except with a DVD changer, you can plug in. You have one port to plug in optical, one for digital audio, and two different inputs for um, digital. Um, no, I'm not digital. Um, composite. You have one. Um, S video out, you have one component out, you have one composite out, but the composite out is only the video composite, no audio, because the audio is going through the speaker system itself. Um, what else do you have going out? You have one HDMI going out that goes, it tops out at 1080i. Now, I bought a second one, and you're going to say, well, why would I go all out on something if it's not a good idea? They say these systems weren't worth it. For the most part, people are correct. It's not worth getting these systems because um, nowadays you can't push the high-grade audio through these. Uh, even if you can get the right connection, it'll probably skip or you won't hear anything at all. Like I had problems and that's why I had to buy a regular receiver for my upstairs. But um, if you're just playing DVDs in my room like most of the time with the occasional Blu-ray that doesn't go through the roof in audio, they actually work out pretty good. They help out a lot for basic audio. And they're cheap. You can get the FX80, which I just bought again, which I paid um, a little more money for because I got all the original speakers and subwoofer for, for it now. Um, but if I hadn't bought the FX80, just the unit itself, for $25 at a flea market a couple of years ago, I probably would never have one of these systems. I would just keep buying receivers. Also, the good thing about some of these systems, it, well, I only own one of them, but I can only assume from the videos as far online, they're a lot smaller, which means you can fit these systems into a bedroom. You can, I cranked a lot of things into my room. It's way too small, but I stuff things into it. You can cramp these systems into a room because the units like aren't as big and heavy as like this receiver I have down here. You've seen the denim down here. It's heavy, and even the one I have upstairs is pretty heavy. You can't put that in a room, and plus you have all that speaker wire hanging out of the back. These are plugs, so at least on the back of these units there's not bare speaker wire. Although I some I had to connect one wire to another one because it wasn't long enough, but whatever. Um. There's, there's uh, some advantages to this stuff, um, mainly that you get, for this, really, it's only, I, I don't put DVDs in the changer anymore, because I'm afraid they'll get stuck. Um, I'm going to test it anyways. The next time I get my changer, what I'm going to do is the other one that I bought, which the person's on vacation, so it's going to be at least a few weeks, I don't know when. Whenever the person gets back from their eBay vacation, <laughs> it's, yeah. I should have read it beforehand, but I couldn't find another one that came with all the wires. I don't want all the speakers and not have those plugs. If I don't have those plugs, getting all the new speakers is kind of, well, it's not useless, but I'd rather have extra speaker wire, too. Without those special plugs, forget it. The only way to buy the plugs by themselves is from China at 7 bucks a piece, which is a ripoff. They're only worth about a buck a piece, and they take like a month to get here from the estimate. So I'd rather just get the whole big thing all together. So that's what I decided on doing. Um, like I said, if you're, if you're going to want to use it as a main setup, that's just a big no-no. It's good for old DVDs to watch all the time. You can watch um, Blu-rays on it and stuff. I've done that before. No problem sending out a 5.1 from a Blu-ray or anything, or even a 4K player, if it's whatever it's playing. As long as it has an optical or digital audio output. The only problem is, like I said, um, it's, if you're using optical and you're using something with high-grade audio, it might not be able to push the audio through the optical. Therefore, um, it's going to skip and stuff like that. 
Although I have never had that problem with the DVD changer before. Maybe it happened once. But uh, other than that, no problems with it. Yeah, and neighbor's going to work. Every morning, like 1.30 in the morning, neighbor goes to work. <laughs> so, um, so, that's that. Um, I, another good thing about this is I get a second controller with my um, theater system. I accidentally recently bought two theater systems, and unfortunately, oh, no, ne neither one of them was a Sony. One of them was a Samsung, and I forgot what the other one was. I don't believe any of them were a Sony. But regardless of what they were, actually, I can look at them right now. Regardless of what they were, um, unless you have the speaker, the special um, plugs in the back, they don't work. They do that on purpose. You want to know why? Because they want you to, if if you misplace or break something on these things, they want to make sure you rebuy it through them and you don't go somewhere else to rebuy everything. I think that's kind of a shitty tactic, but if they gave you something that was universal and you could stick anything in the back like a regular sp receiver, um, you wouldn't be required to buy the plugs for it anymore and stuff. That's where they probably made all their money with the pots. Although they say it's impossible to switch things out with these... Um, with these things, it's not impossible. It's really not impossible. You just, um, you got to make sure you buy the right subwoofer or else it won't work right. It won't necessarily damage it, they said, but it, it won't probably won't work at all if you put a, a passive subwoofer that's too much. That's right. Subwoofers suck on these things, too. I got it to work pretty good, but um, a lot of people complain about it. I'm trying to look it up right now. Um to see exactly um, which player I uh, players I bought to end this video at that. Um, let's see. Um, geez. Oh yeah, I bought a Panasonic, Panasonic and a Samsung. And I didn't even bother to use the, um, I tried to, actually no, I tried to use the controllers from both of them. And since they were technically, they weren't home theater, I think one of them was a home theater system. It had the connections on the back. Yeah, one of my pin. Um, one of them I have is a. I don't understand some of these systems nowadays, but none of my controllers worked for them. So it was funny though. None of my controllers worked, but I'm, when I hooked up the Samsung to my LG, the um, smart TV um, was compatible with it, and I could control it with my smart controller. But I, I didn't want to do that. Because on the smart TV controller, there's no play button or pause. It wouldn't be a regular controller. I, I can never get used to using it. So, that's that. Alright, well, good luck everyone. And that's it. And, bye-bye. Oh, and just uh, my final verdict. If you want to buy a system, um, I suggest if you want to get like a more authentic feel for what it was like to listen to things for your the old DVDs, it's perfect. Buy the model I have, the FX80. You don't necessarily have to use the speakers that come with it, but don't use high-grade ones. That's probably a bad idea. You might, ruin, you might ruin something. But you you can get the system itself for probably fifty or sixty dollars, um, and you could probably get the plugs with it if you spend another thirty or forty with the wires, and you can get a good system just for retro things, and you don't have to spend a lot of money compared to what other people spend. Some people spend thousands of dollars on a receiver and you know sometimes it's not worth it. Just buy the basic stuff and that's what I usually watch. I watch, I try to watch a lot of DVDs in my room. Now that I have a really nice one in the living room I haven't watched anything in my room lately. It's great doing Dolby Pro Logic too. So it upgrades laser discs and VCR tapes. At least the one I have does it. I mean I'm sure not all of them do that but Whatever. Bye-bye.